Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Quick Points Podcast. I'm Pat O'Rourke. I'm the sports editor of the BU News Service. I'm alongside Alex Hirsch once again. And Alex, uh, how about that game on Sunday night? <laughs> it was uh, it was depressing watching it at the bar. Um, got, your, got your hopes up. Well, first it went down, then it went up, well, first then it went down. I, I, that, huh. first, that first drive of the game, like, it yeah. was... Right away they scored. I was like, this this game's gonna be a blowout because I, I thought it was gonna be. I I thought it could. You know, it was like this might be a blowout. You know, I thought so <laughs> if too. the Patriots kind of figured things out with their offense and, um, you know, facing Wade Phillips's defense, I thought that was a game that I I didn't see it being that way because of the weather and kind of you know I thought Bronco the Broncos do have a good defense, but I thought there was a potential it could be a you know a thirty to ten game, which well, which it obviously looked, it, it wasn't looked that way at the beginning. You're right, uh, Brady Brady sliced right yep. through. Um, was able to. Uh, was it Gronk with the first touchdown of the game? I believe. Was uh, it? Yeah. Was it? Was, Gronk, or was, was Gronk. it Gronk or was it Chandler? No, I believe it was Gronk okay. on that. Uh, what was it? The the, the touchdown that he had. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He flies into the end zone right. like always. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, it was. It was a. It was a good game. No, it ended up being a like a good Sunday. It ended up being a good game to actually watch, which many of these Patriots games are normally boring by the second quarter. <laughs> yeah, it actually uh, was a pretty decent it, game. It was actually a good game. Um, unfortunately, you know, it, it, we didn't get the outcome we wanted. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was it, – it had all this energy and real excitement. And then, you know, then Gronk gets hurt, and then everyone's deflated. The whole bar was dead silent, except for the five girls that didn't even pay attention <laughs> to the game, and they were still cheering, and it was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Gronk's hurt, and they're like, "Oh." Uh, but then, so that that went out, that went on, and then that looks got, really ugly. It looks it looks that looks ugly. really ugly. And then the, you know they came back. Everyone's excitement was through the air. High fives all around, standard yep. Boston fashion. And then uh, you got a. Uh, I wasn't thinking that. Uh, I, then, I I, I didn't even they well no when they tied the game I was just thinking Gronk's done for the year so the season's over. Yeah. They could go sixteen and zero, and they're they're probably going to lose in the AFC Championship well, game. Well, I, I Super never Bowl. count them out without if Brady's still there. I I think Gronk is. Gronk is one of the players you can't you can't lose, but if Brady's there, you could st- in this bad league. I think you could still win with Brady. It's possible. I this, just this year's so the teams are so bad this year. Yeah. But let's talk about the game. Let's talk. Let's let's talk about the game. What what were some of the things you saw that you liked from this game? I thought that was a really big character game. Yeah. It char- it, well, obviously, you can't say a character win. No. Although I guess it was kind of a win in itself. I think Gronk it's a win because Gronk is healthy. Yeah. Yeah. But the character they showed and. Uh, uh, someone told me this yesterday. I, I thought I agreed wholeheartedly with was that they showed more character in that loss than they had in any win that to that point of the season. Yeah, uh, them, I mean, you know, Gronk goes maybe, down, maybe and, and you can see when, when Gronk went down, you could see that. Too. Yeah, but when, when, when Gronk went down, you could see that you know there was a little bit of a shockwave. There's a the team was to pardon the pun deflated. <laughs> well, look and at the, look at the faces. Brady was yeah, just like his. They, it was. It was, white. it was a it was punch in like the gut. He, he knew he knew his season was yep. over. You know, but for them to come back right away after Gronk gets hurt, kick the game tying field goal, and obviously the, hell the of result, a drive. yeah, hell, a hell of a hell drive. Of a drive. And Gasowski just gets up there and you know kicks a fifty five yard field goal in the snow like it's a chip shot in the middle of the summer, which mm-hmm. is amazing. But I'll, t- I'll tell you the one thing I really liked, and I know the defense let down at the, towards the end of the game. They gave up some touchdowns, but I I loved what I saw. Out of Logan Ryan, I thought he dominated Demarius. Oh, Thomas Logan Ryan game. was the best player on the field. He was dominating him, and even though Emmanuel Sanders had a pretty solid game, six catches, 113 um, yards on nine targets, I still liked the way Malcolm Butler played him. Well, I thought Malcolm Butler, Butler was all over him. And well, what, what I've been there was saying just about some Butler great all season throws, is great throws and great yeah. catches by Emmanuel Sanders that they're sometimes going to catch, and some of those were in zone coverage too. So Butler wasn't necessarily on him, but I thought Butler looked phenomenal. That is the number one corner on the team on many teams. He's a top five yep. corner in this league right now, and I love it. I love what I'm seeing out of him. I loved what I saw out of that secondary as well for the most part. But Logan Ryan and Logan Ryan's been a great surprise for me, and Malcolm Butler's been phenomenal. Well, one thing I'll say about Butler, yeah, I mean, like we said, he allowed what was it six six and one hundred thirteen to Sanders, mm-hmm. I mean, which isn't he, technically all him. I mean, there were some zone catches. Yeah, well. yeah, but but I mean, he'll he'll give up a big catch like this. this is what I've been saying about him all season. So he'll give up a big catch like that, you know, twenty twenty five yard catch, and it'll come right back. He'll he'll bat down a pass. He'll make you know he'll almost make a pick. He'll make you know he'll he'll you know 
pretty much take the receiver out of the game. That's what you want to see out of a number one corner. Mm-hmm. And, and I, don't, I don't mentally, know if he's mentally tough. Yeah, he's a exactly. mentally tough player. It's, he's got the tenacity is, of a number one corner, and he's got the attitude of a number yeah. one corner, and he is a number one corner. You're going to get beat when you're a cornerback. Yeah. It's natural. It's like closers are going to blow games. Goalies, goaltenders are going to allow goals. Cornerbacks are going to get beat. It's about how you respond, if you respond from getting beat. And he responds as good as I've but that as, was, good as, as good as I've seen from the best of them. Whether that, it's Revis Law, any of those guys, I don't think he's as good as any of those guys at least yet. But you see, you see what he brings to the table, and, and man, you you can you can see the potential he has, and I'm really excited for him. That was the one thing. That was that was the the thing that stood out the most to me in that game, though, was the secondary play um, yeah. by Logan Ryan and Malcolm Butler. That is what I really liked from that game. Um, but there's a lot of things I, I really didn't like in that game that it it was a little it was a little unnerving. Um, I didn't like what I saw out of Chandler Jones last night. I hated what I saw out of the receiving core. Mind you, obviously it wasn't the best. Well, what are you best. expecting? You well, know? I expect a little more yeah. out of Brandon LaFell. But yeah, LaFell, I suppose. LaFell was four catches, 36 yards on nine. But targets. is LaFell the number one receiver? I mean, you look I, at what LaFell did last year. You got to put in. It doesn't. Put, I don't think it matters. Four for nine is not good yeah. enough. Um, regardless of what he put in, um, that was not good enough. I also don't like. I James White is terrible. This kid cannot play. He can't break away from anyone. He catches the ball, and he goes down immediately. He runs the ball. He goes straight into the pile. And that, that's why, obviously, they went with Brandon Bolden in the second half because James White can't do it. Well, White, you, can see why, you can see why he's been – was this his second or third year here? James White or Bolden? Uh, James White. Second year. Fourth round pick out of Wisconsin But you, year. you can see why he's been passed over again and again and again. Yeah. You can see why Deion Lewis won the job out of camp. You can see yeah. why he didn't get much time last year as a rookie. After I thought he was a pretty highly touted back coming out of Wisconsin. He, was. he wasn't a high draft pick, but he was a pretty highly touted draft pick was he a third or fourth round pick? fourth round pick but that's what's concerning yeah. is because we actually need him right now we need him and brandon bolden to combine to fill Dion lewis's role yep. brandon bolden's doing a pretty decent job four catches 84 yards obviously 63 of those were on that touchdown yard um but it was four on four targets and that was what was important uh james white two catches on five mm-hmm. targets only five yards and he can't run the ball worth a, worth a damn three carries of one yard uh it's just it's uh it's it's frustrating to see and that that was something I did not like. The other thing I hated, really hated, and you know, obviously I wasn't at the game, so I don't, I don't know what the weather was like, but I did not like the play calling going into the half and coming out of the half. Mm-hmm. I hated it. We, we had we had the ball two minutes off three timeouts, and we're just running the ball. Well, this is what's grinded my gears with with Josh McDaniels over the years is that they just go away from the run, and I, I understand that. I, I understand that you know you're not. If you're not running the ball effectively, and you know why are you running the ball? But at the same time, you got to lead in the second half in a game like that. Why are you passing? Run down the clock, eat up the clock. Yeah, I know Brock Osweiler is not Peyton Manning, but he's like I said, I thought he's a he looks pretty good. He was a pretty good quarterback. You have a one it, touchdown lead going into half with two minutes and yeah. three touch timeouts, but you're all you're doing is running yeah. on three straight plays with no timeouts, and you have the best quarterback in the world ever to play in your backfield. And you're not even trying to get into field goal range. That bothered me because what is what is Bill Belichick's thing that he loves to do? He loves to score before the halftime and then score mm-hmm. coming out of the halftime. They had that opportunity with three timeouts, two t- uh, three timeouts, two minutes left, and they didn't do it. And then they come out of the half looking flat with on a three and out as well. And they try to run in the ball, and it, they can't run the ball. So I, I don't. I understand you want to. You know, McDaniel's needs to balance the run in the other sorts of the area game. Um, and other times of the game, but at this moment, he tr- all he did was run, and it was terrible play calling on second and ten. They're running it with James White, or second and ten, they're running it with Brandon Bolden. W- what are they doing? Why aren't they trying to put this away? Had they tried to put this away, we might not even never got to this point. Maybe we're not trying to throw it in the fourth quarter, and Rob Gronkowski doesn't get hurt. You never know. I mean, obviously, those are you know those are what ifs, big what ifs, obviously. But why are we not trying to score? That was so frustrating to me. I, I don't know. What did you think about that? Yeah, I, I well, at the end of the first half, I thought that was that was pretty bizarre how they, yeah. um, you know, at least try to get a field goal, make exactly. it a two possession game. But you're, you're forty yards away. The, de- yeah. the defense hasn't really been able to stop you in the first yeah. half. So, yeah, I, I thought it was a bad day all along for the offense. But but at the same time, you factor in you know the weather. I know I know Brady's been been great you know in the the all the stats with Brady in cold weather games, but it's still a cold weather game. It's football yeah. slippery. Um, you know, it's the conditions aren't great, but um, 
they're also they're also extremely short-handed. I mean, yeah, they're short-handed. Not having and, Edelman, and not having Edelman to, was a huge. I thought it was a huge, huge loss. Yeah, that, it that's was. a big loss. And that changes everything with that. But offense, it, you also have to do. factor in the pl- uh, the penalties. The penalties were out of control right now. The um, refing was atrocious. The refing was atrocious. Uh, so let's talk about that for a little bit. Yeah. All right, there you have the huge holding call on Patrick Chung. The huge offensive pass interference call on Rob Gronkowski. He had two of them. The first one, I, I you know I don't know, but the second one was a huge one. Um, which uh, negate the the Chung one negated a sack, which made it would have made it what third and eighteen, and then instead made it the first Chung. and five. That was huge. And then Gronkowski's uh, took away what a uh, took away a big big catch, a big like twenty yard it was catch. A, it was a big twenty yard catch that would have been a first down. And I then think, they, and I then think they the Gronkowski the one was worse. Oh, I think the worst one was the holding call um, on the offense. I forget who it was on um, that negated the Keyshawn Martin like forty five yard catch. Yep. That one that one put up us uh, some field goal range right there too. And a wide open Keyshawn Martin on this ticky tacky holding call. That was incredible. I don't remember who that one was on. Do you do do you recall who that one was on? I don't on? remember. But the, the, the refs I the, these aren't it's not just our game, but it does seem and for the most part, I would say we actually benefit from the majority of those calls. For the for the most of the season, I'd say we've gotten the better end of the calls. I Some mean, of them, yeah. I'd I'd say you have to think that way. Otherwise, we wouldn't be ten. And, we wouldn't have been ten to zero going into that game if we were getting the brunt end of all of the, those calls. The game but I remember in particular game, though, was the Buffalo game. But, I thought but the, the that first Buffalo, Buffalo game, game had one bad ones. But then this yeah. game, not only that, but then you have the communication uh, lack of communication at the end of the game, which. Whether you know, Belichick even said yes. They got the they got the issue right. Uh, if you if you don't remember what happened, the uh, there was an injury timeout yep. with about twenty seven seconds left, and they took the injury timeout. But according to the rule book, after the injury timeout is taken, as soon as the ball is set back on the field, the clock continues to run. Belichick wasn't upset about that. Belichick was upset that that wasn't communicated to him. Um, he said, which he should quote, be. He's perfectly winning his right. Quote. He said, "I think the way that the, the it was ruled was right. The communication involving the play and all that probably could have been handled better somehow in the process." So, uh, he's right. It should have been ruled better because they didn't know. They were under the impression that it was a timeout, so they took their time. And you know, luckily it didn't hinder the. You know, they were still able to get the field goal. But you never know. Maybe they would have been able to get a touchdown. Mm-hmm. We we don't know. I, they might not have been even going for a touchdown. But still, I mean, that was that was huge. And Tom, Tommy Kern um, made a great, an interesting point. I won't say it's a great point, but I, I'm curious on what your thoughts are on this. The Patriots last year had the deflate scandal, deflating football yeah. scandal. And a lot of referees seem to think, this is his point, mind you, a lot of referees might be feeling out there that the Patriots try to pull one over on them. They, they cheated the referees. So some people are wondering... Do the referees have it out for the Patriots this year? Because of the they they want revenge a little bit on the Patriots. No, I, I don't think that. I look, I, I think what I said about the whole the whole root of that deflate gate scandal was the vast, vast ineptitude in the side of the referees. The referees were who just just the whole process. I think the 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 biggest pers- the biggest I think the biggest piece of the blame pie to me in that in that whole deflate gate nonsense that started the whole thing was Walt Anderson. Know where the footballs are. Mm-hmm. No, have an idea, you know, if if there really are strict guidelines, which which apparently according to the NFL, they're they're pretty serious about these about these uh football deflation. Yeah. At least inflation. At least they were in that case. I yeah. don't know if they ever were before. No, it never were, seemed were. like they were before. I didn't know I didn't know what did you know what the levels of PSI required were before? I never even no. heard of PSI nope. before. No, me neither. <laughs> never heard of PSI. I that was that was like, you know, a semester of of um you know grad school um, Science physics, I guess. Yeah, yeah. but, but um, yeah, and no, I, I agree. I think the, the I, I, overwhelming I think blame the, was on the referees. But does that make the referees a little bit? You know, maybe they want to blow the whistle a little bit more against the Patriots. No, maybe they're pissed off. I just don't think they're very good at their jobs. <laughs> I think that's what it is. I think that's the root of it. I don't think they have any agenda against anyone. I just think I just don't think they're good at their job, and that's why. And and the Patriots are not. Like I said, I think the Patriots have benefited from inept ref- refereeing. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said earlier, I think you know I, the one I remember in particular was that Buffalo that second week that Buffalo game week two. I I was watching that game and you know just saying wow like the Bills like there's some ridiculous calls on both mm-hmm. sides but particularly I thought the Bills were getting jobbed and I was thinking yeah, if, I'm a Bills Bills, were. if I were a Bills fan I'd be pretty mad right I'd be pretty upset right now. And so I, I don't think the refs have it out of the Patriots or anyway. I just, I just think they suck. Well, and then, and then last week against Buffalo, 
Um, they had that one. What was the the penalty? That was a mistake. The inadvertent uh, whistle. Yeah, the inadvertent whistle. And again, whistle. the ref is like you yeah. know three deep into the in, into the ref, into the Bills bench. You know, like he's watching the you know like he's some twelve year old kid watching the marathon whistle, finish. But, and but even Kraft came out and said, you know, we are human. We all make mistakes. But yeah, I, I, I didn't see, and I thought that was a mistake in the Buffalo game. These, but it I was a crucial mistake that can't happen. I, you know, I, honestly, I, I I think people are way over exaggerating that. If if the inadvertent whistle hadn't been blown, then the receiver would have been right. On, I mean, the corner would have been with Danny Amendola, so therefore he probably would have been tackled anyways. So he would have been tackled right at the yeah, same but spot. Still, of the, it's, it's it sucks because it it's a, a what game if, changing mistake. I don't, I don't think so at all. But it um, it, 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 well, you're talking even in that case, that's a first down in the Bills' territory. Well, they territory got the first down. As opposed they, to they gave it to them. They gave them the first down, and then they gave them a plus 15 yardage. Oh, yeah. So yeah. It, I don't think uh, it was forgot, a, cr- okay. it yeah. wasn't a critical that, mistake yeah. at all. They gave them, the, they gave them the, the catch at the spot of the catch, and, you know, people are like, well, Danny Amendola could have ran the whole way. Yeah, he could have ran the whole way, but that only could have ran the whole way because the corner stopped running because of the inadvertent whistle. If there was no inadvertent mm-hmm. whistle, the corner's right there with him. We all know Danny Amendola does not have breakaway speed, so he's probably getting tackled right there. But – that was a, just a mistake. That That is a mistake. Humans make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Last game against the Broncos on Sunday night, I didn't think these were mistakes. I thought these were just terrible, terrible calls. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they think they made mistakes. There's a thing where you could just blow the whistle by an accident. There's an in your mouth. You blow it by an accident. It's like, shoot, I blew the whistle. Did not mean to do that. It was inadvertent. This was, I blew the whistle because he held. Because Patrick Chung held the, rece- held the receiver in the end zone. Terrible call. I Awful blew the whistle call. because Rob, Rob Gronkowski pushed off in uh, to get the first down, to get that catch. Awful call. His far- arm was barely fully extended. Could have gone either way. It should have been just a no call because you got to let these kids play at some point. And then there was the holding call, which I still can't remember who that was on, that negated the Keyshawn Martin um, cat, uh, 40, 45-yard bomb catch as well. So I think, these are, I think these are right. I think you're right. I'm sorry. I think this is just bad officiating mm-hmm. um, in those in those areas. If it, if it, if I, I don't agree with Tommy Curran as well, just to yeah. wrap that point okay. up. Yep. I don't agree. I don't think that the refs are – I think it's an interesting theory in the world of conspiracy it's, theories. It's interesting, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. if you want to throw there's more conspiracies there, there. That's, that's good. I mean, I'm sure that there's plenty of ammunition if the refs wanted to be like, yeah, well, they've cheated us so many times, blah, blah, if, blah. If this was but, an isolated incident where, you know, the, the refereeing was at least, you know, I wouldn't say – Good, right. but at least average. It was just bad was for, just against the Patriots. One yes. one incident, I would say, but but we've been seeing this all year. And for the Referees most part, screwing things exactly. Up. And for the so, most part, it has benefited the Patriots and yeah. not everyone else. So I I think you're right. It it does feel like we're <laughs> feels like we've got the refs from the replacement refs though right now, and it don't we don't have the real officiating crew from years ago during the um the, the terrible. Well, there's there's been a lot of refs the Packers that have, and uh, Seahawks. Well, there's been a lot of refs that have come into the league in the past couple of years. I didn't I don't have the exact numbers, but I know there's been a lot of um, mm-hmm. there's been a lot of turnovers in terms of the referees. I mean, the, the you know the superstars are still there. You know the Walt Andersons and the uh, Ed Hockeyleys and the guys like that. But there's a lot of newer refs from their second, first, second, third year officiating. I think that has a lot to do with it. That they're coming from somewhere else and kind of similar to uh, to to the college refs. Right. They're the replacement refs that came in. But do, how how much does this hurt the Patriots? Do the Patriots have to change the way they play? Do the Patriots have to? The Patriots are known for going outside the rule, not outside the rule books, but towing on that towing on that line well, of like, yeah. is it legal? Is it not illegal? If well, the refs the don't book, know well. their job. They if know, the refs yeah. don't know the job, then the Patriots have to err on the side of caution more than on the side of like, let's push the rule book. I don't think they push the rule book. I think they know the rule book. I think they know it better than better than a lot of refs, a lot of coaches, and even some people who write the rule books. And, yeah, and, but know, does this change that? Does this change the way the Patriots have to play? No, I don't think so. Because uh, I think it might. I think I think it has to. They have to be a little bit more cautious. They have to. They have to. They can't be. They can't. They can't go for into the dark, deep, dark areas of the rule book because the refs don't know what to do right now. I feel like they they're just gonna blow the whistle. <laughs> they don't. They have no idea. It's an illegal formation all of a sudden, and it's not. But um, every it does seem like every week though the NFL has to be like, yeah, we apologize. The refs missed that call, or the refs got that call wrong, and, and it's happening more and more. But uh, I, I wonder if does Gronk need to change the way he needs to play? Um, six offensive pass interference calls on him yep. this year. That's more than anyone else. Um, does he need to change the way he plays? Um, but it's which is really unfair because teams play him physically. That's the only yeah. way to play him. Um, so I don't know. I think it might they might be changing things up in practice a little bit. But they could be. They they could be. But 
speaking of practice, though, I think they, I think if they need to change the way they play, it's it's because they're so short-handed right now, at well, least yeah. for the time being. No Edelman, uh, no Gronk for at least the next week or two. No Amendola. Who, uh, for, who knows? He should be it, back. He hopefully. might be back, but he'll be. In, you know, if he's not back, you know. You, so I mean, you, you're missing some. You, you're playing with ponies as opposed to horses well, now. And you so got no more. That's, Chris, that's the big thing for no, me. That's no why they have to change Harper. the way they play. No Chris Harper anymore. I oh darn! Yeah, no loss. Chris Harper. Um. Who's gonna Who's gonna muff punts now? <laughs> But uh, the, yeah, they're they're down they're down three receive. Oh, I'm sorry, they're down four 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 receiving threats. I mean, if you want to count Aaron Dobson in there, he's yeah. he's better than Chris Harper at least. He'd so, have been their best receiver this week. He, he could have been. So and it, he who would have been a, it would have been a nice compliment to have yeah. him outside of uh, Brandon LaFell as well. Yeah, and so, yeah, LaFell's your top receiver right now. Got, who, but that's all you've got right yeah. now. You, you're, you've lost Gronk. You've lost Amendola. You've lost Edelman. Mm-hmm. You've now lost Hightower as well. Collins is still um, mysteriously uh, inactive. Mm-hmm. So you're losing players left and right. I don't know if you've lost anyone else, though. I think that's – I mean, you've lost yeah. Deion Lewis. Yeah. But for the most part, that that's it. So these injuries, uh, what, are, what do the Patriots do? I mean, what? how do you – do you change the way you play? Do you start Do you start thinking postseason? Sign Terrell Owens. What? Sign Terrell Owens. Sign Terrell Owens. Yeah. See, I, he, he I threw out, Sign was, Randy Moss. Okay, that's, that's – <laughs> That was also sarcastic. But but I'd sign Randy bit. Moss. A little though. bit. I'm not. But I'm not sarcastic about signing Randy Moss. That guy can probably oh, still play. Yeah, I don't know. He's he's three years younger than Terrell Owens, probably. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wouldn't sign either of them. But, but I mean, the people are talking about LaFell right now. Well, now LaFell becomes a big part of the offense. Uh, but he's your he's your best receiver right now. Brandon LaFell, who I don't think he's certainly not a number one receiver. No, probably not a number two. I mean, he's he, a good number two. He had a great year last year. As the third or fourth option, he was in that. third option. Yeah, third. Yeah, third or fourth. But he's he's all you got right now. Gronk is out for, I'm gonna say at least two weeks. I'm gonna say he's he, they've already ruled him out for this week. Yeah. They'll probably be caught. They're gonna be cautious with the guy. Um, yeah, don't don't play him in Houston. Yeah, you don't need to play I, him I in have, Houston. Um, you got Amendola. <laughs> I think of Houston. I think of Wes Walker on that yeah. carpet ripping himself up. That's yeah, a terrible but, turf. Yeah, and then so many people got, have blown up their knees there over the years. And then you've got uh, you got Amendola. Um, who he should be back, and that would be a huge get back for the Patriots. Uh, Amendola has been looking yeah. good. Then you've got Hightower, who's got a sprained MCL or PCL, MCL, MCL. Yeah. So he's that's, out. He's out for a couple weeks now. Um, and you look at what happened with that run defense after he went out. That's a huge, um, huge yeah. loss. I mean, they, they started getting gashed. I mean, it was 15, 15 rushes for forty three yards before yeah. he. So there was less than three yards of carry before he, um, before he, went down, and obviously they. They ripped off those two big runs that um, was a score that got him back into the game, and it was a score that ultimately won them the game. Yeah, no, they, yeah. he's a huge yeah. loss, and hopefully they're getting Jamie Collins back at some point. I mean, at least he was doubtful this week rather than out out until the game. So, I mean, at least that's progress. I'm just happy he's alive. Yeah. I thought <laughs> he was dead at one point. I was like, is this guy like? Is this guy okay? Is he? But hopefully he should be back either next week or uh, this week coming up against the Eagles or next week against the Texans. I, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with he'll be back for one of those. And that's um, that's big. I think he's the most dynamic player on that defense. So that, that's huge, getting him back. But here's the here's kind of the silver lining, though, of the Patriots losing to the Broncos. Is Let's say the Patriots had won, all right? Then they beat the Eagles, they beat the Texans, they beat the Dolphins and the Jets. And they're going into week 17. Or oh, my God. I'm so happy the 16-0 and 0 talk's over. The 16-0 and 0 talk is over, which means if they've secured their first-round bye and the number one seed, they can rest these players. And then they get another week after that as well because they got uh, the bye going uh, in the playoffs. So that do you know how huge that is for this team right now? This is one of the most banged-up teams in the league. Now, the depth is still there. I'm just happy about it. Fortunately, the depth is still there. But the stars are just yeah. going. Well, I, I think if they're fifteen and zero and they really need to rest guys, they're going to rest guys. They're I, gonna, I don't think they're, they're doing that. A game. I, I, don't I don't think, think they're they doing it. But it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, they can't do it now. They don't have to even contemplate that. They're they they can go fourteen and two now yeah. for all I care. As long as they get the number one seed, I don't care how many games they lose, regardless of the rest of the season. I, I really don't. It's a good. It's 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 almost good that they lost because not only did they lose, but they also won because Gronk's not out for the year. So they, they won in that aspect. That's that's what truly matters. And they're going to have the option now to hopefully rest players going into the last week. Um, and I, th- I think that's huge because that gives them, was that, two or three weeks of yeah. rest, um, which will be huge for Hightower, mm-hmm. huge for Edelman. That's the big get back. Huge for Gronk as well. Because for, for all we know, if they can win without Gronk, you, you could be looking at, they might rest Gronk until this team loses again. 
it it wouldn't be. Wouldn't so I mean, be until a, the, the number one seeds in, in doubt. Or yeah, or until the number one seeds in doubt. Yeah, why not? You you yeah, might you might rest them until that happens. So if the Patriots win next week and then they beat the Texans as well, it's like what? Why why even bring Gronk back until that number one seed is in doubt? Maybe you bring him back. I wouldn't even bring him back for the Jets game in New York. That's a physical physical mm-hmm. game that they always play. I don't want Gronk playing on a bruised knee that's going to feel like he's got a torn ACL every time. So, I don't know. I think I think we caught a big break here by losing and not losing Gronk. I was just ha- I was just happy to see them lose for selfish reasons. I was tired of hearing about the 6 0 stuff. <laughs> and, and I tweeted it after the game. At Go Pats and whoever's playing the Panthers because I, I just – I, I just I hate all this 16 and 0 talk. Yeah. I hate it more than Don Schuler. I think. <laughs> I, I really think I do. Well, I think it, it'll, it's nice that it's done now. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. They, they play Eagles at home this week. Who you got? This week? Yeah. Well, I guess I'll go with the Pats. They're, <laughs> they're pretty good. Pretty good. I yeah. think they're pretty good still, especially if Mark Sanchez is playing. Mark Sanchez has never played well against the Patriots. Yeah. <laughs> the former so. former USC quarterback versus the future in, in, in the future USC coach. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll we'll see what happens. I, I got the Patriots winning this week too. That's all we got for quick points this week. Uh, make sure you tune in at the end of the week for a uh, new four and out with me and alongside Pat O'Rourke, the sports editor for the BU News Service. I'm Alex Hirsch. Uh, have a good week.